Now that we touched upon iterations, I want to show you a different way to iterate through values. And that is a very particular type of variable called an array. So let's uh, set up a scene so we can see these arrays in action. So just press C and let's go and get an uh, array. And uh, you can see we have a lot of things about arrays. And what I'm going to use is the build array. Just drag it here. Now let's look at the interface for a second. You need to tell it what data type the array is going to contain. The array is a single variable that contains multiple values of a variable type. So for example, an iteration has integers from 0 to any number. So it's very similar to an array. If an array had numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and so forth. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array whose data type is going to be a vector. So click on that and select vector and automatically it gets populated by four vectors. You can append and append in array lingo means add something at the end and you can add as many as you want and then you can truncate which means remove one from the end. And that's how arrays work. You can add elements in between as well but mostly you will append at the end and you will truncate from the end. You will cut it down. So what I'm going to do here is uh, put some values here. So 0, 0, 0, uh, 100, 100, and 100, 200, 200, 200, 300, 300, and 301, just to, to add some diversity here. So we have these four elements. Now, if I go and create my typical setup with a sphere, so C primitive, let's go and grab a primitive sphere. There you go. I'm going to make it smaller, 50, and then I'm going to press C and type matrix. Bring up the matrix operator, and let's do the connections. Put the op stream in the op input, put this here, and we have one sphere. I always like to look at the lines, it just makes me feel nice. And then I'm going to take this array out, and let me click here. You can see it says it's an array that contains vectors. All right, so let's take this array and put it in the matrix. And although we have a conversion from vector to matrix, uh, the node system can handle that quite nicely. If I wanted to do this uh, properly, I would actually press C and find Compose Matrix. And what I would do is put this here and put this in the translation. And now these four values, these four vectors, are driving the position of each sphere. So you can see that an array can be used as a substitute to an iteration given a very particular workflow. We are going to expand on arrays in this video, so don't worry if something doesn't really make sense. Now I can go and append more. You can't see any changes because it's adding spheres in exactly the same position. I can go and move them around. But it's interesting how you can create a group of objects and go and manually change their values as you wish. So this is a, a very interesting way of creating clones of objects by using certain values. Now, having said that, this particular node, the build, doesn't allow us to automatically, procedurally, populate these values. It's more like a static way of uh, making things, putting in the numbers here and so forth. Not that you can't go and drive each element with a different number, but there are other ways to do that a bit more efficiently because the system is open and you can do all sorts of shenanigans and drive things any way you want. Let me show you another build node. Press C and let's go and build and you will find in the arrays the build fill only, parenthesized. Let's bring this in and take a look at this. Now for now let me just disconnect these things here and let's take a look at this. Now currently this has one fill value. It doesn't have a particular data type but it assumes it's going to be a vector. I'm going to set the data value to be an integer. And the second thing you see here it says a length. So what this is creating is an array that contains 100 zeros. 
That's all it does. Now, where do I see this array? Where can I actually see these values? Well, we don't have, as of yet, any advanced debugging tools or any feedback tools, but there is a way I use that allows me to see what's going on. First of all, you bring up a node called the console out, and you connect whatever values you want to probe in the in. So let's put this here. But in order for this to print out any result in your console, it needs to be connected. It needs to have data flowing through it. And the easiest way I found to do this is to create a color operator, which is something we're going to see later on. Make this the sole output of the scene and go to the color and put this out. Now, it won't do any colorization, but because the data is flowing through all the way to the scene, it will print in the console. And that's good enough for the purpose I want it right now. So you can see that we have these curly brackets here, and we have 100 zeros, and the curly brackets at the end, and you can see that they are comma delimited. So what we are seeing here is one variable that contains an iteration of values. In this particular case, they are all zeros. So how do I go and populate this array with uh, different types of values? I'm going to show you the very simple way to do that, and I'm going to use a range. So type range, bring up the range, and let me show you how this works. We can either go to this already created array and change the values one by one. Let's see how that will be done. So we have an array. It's got 100 zeros, and this is the printout. Now I want to go and write the values. So bring up what's called a write value node. The write value node requires an array to go and write the values. Let me put this value over here. So now we're intercepting the actual array using the write value node. And what the write value is doing right now is it's going to index 0 and it's putting a value of 0. Now, index 0 is the first index of the array. So if I go and change this number, you will see that the first index, the first component of this array, changes its value. That's interesting. So I can take this range, and I can feed it in the index. And what this will do, it will go well, now it won't do anything. But if I set this to, let's say, 50, it's going to go to the first 50 indices, because this is iterating from 0 to 49. And therefore, it's iterating the right value to go and write a value of 4 in the first 50 positions. Now, if I go all the way to the right, you will see that right there in the middle, it stops adding these fours, writing these fours, actually. It's not adding them. It's writing these fours in these positions. And the rest are zeros because the count is smaller. But what I can do if I want to change all the values, I need to find what is the length of my array and set it as the end of my iteration, my range. That way, it's always going to write all the values that exist in this array. So I can do that either by automatically getting the output length from the original array, as you can see, or if this array has been built somewhere where you don't have this available, I'm going to show you one more way. Press C and type count, and there's an array node called get count, and all you have to do is put the array in here. It's automatically going to measure it and give us the count and I'm going to put it right there. Now, if you look at this last entry, if I scroll all the way to the right, you will see that all the values have been replaced by 4. Fantastic. So the value is 4. Now it's going to be 5. It can be 0. It can be anything you want. So this little iteration here is reading the length of the array through the get count, and it's iterating the indices and adding this particular value. Now, the other thing I can do, if I wish, is go and take the range itself and feed it in the 
value. And what this is going to do is it's going to iterate over all the indices and put the particular number of that iteration into the value. So now we have an array that has all the numbers from 0 all the way to 99 for a total of 100. So then the question becomes, how do I add values to this array? So instead of 100 entries, what if I want to add an extra 50? Well, then, instead of writing the values, we need to append the values. And the append, as you saw over here, is going to add elements to our array. So let's go and find the append. Let's make some space here. Let's move these around. Let's put this up here. And I can even fold it down so it doesn't occupy too much space. And I'm going to click here and type append. And there you go. So the append node, first of all, needs to know which array it's going to append a value to. So you need to put it in the array in. Automatically, you're going to get the value. And you're going to get a count. This count indicates how many new items it's going to add with every cycle. So if I put this over here, and I go all the way to the end, you can see it added one more after the 99 with a value of 0. If I make this 5, for example, and go all the way to the end, now we've added five zeros. So we can control how many more elements we are going to write to the array from this point onwards. So what I'm going to do now, just for fun, is I'm going to use another range. So type C, range, grab the range node. Let's make it 10. I'm going to put the range into the value. And let's see what this did. It went at the end, and it added, if you go here, 5 times 10. So it went and it added five zeros, which is the first iteration of the range, five ones, five twos, five threes, and so forth. So let's make it increase only by one, because we want one at a time. So make this one. Now you can see here that it's adding after 99. Again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which are the 10 iterations of this. So what if we wanted to actually not start from 0 again, but get whatever the last entry from this array was and continue counting upwards. Now, this is just an example because you can always go and set your array right from the beginning. But in this case, to show you how this works, I want to go and take the last value of this and start adding the range. And that's the key word, adding. So let's go and add. And I'm going to use an arithmetic add. I'm going to set this to be integer. And I'm going to take the count of this range, which is the largest number. So take the count. And to this count, we're going to start adding the range of this one, starting from 0. So if I put this here and I put this there, now what we have is after 99, it goes to 100. Because the count here is 100, because this is the length of the array. And through the get count, we get 100. And because this starts from 0, it takes 100, adds 0 on the first iteration, which is 100. Then it adds 1, 101, and so forth. So you can see now, by using these two ranges in series, we're actually creating an initial array with 100 numbers, 100 numbers from 0 to 99. And then we are adding more numbers to this array that are sequential. To wrap up this video, I'm going to show you the opposite, how we can read values from arrays to use them in any way we want. So I'm going to move things this way. I'm going to take my color up and my console and move it out. And at this point, we have this array. So everything is nice and dandy. If I want to go and read the values, I'm going to use a read value node. And this read value reads the array. We put the value we read 
in the console. Now, if this happens, that's because currently the console is printing an array, and this is not an array. It's a single integers. It's an iteration. All you have to do is just disconnect this and connect this. This read value is reading from the incoming array index 0, and it's printing the value. If I increase this, you will see that I'm reading the values in sequence from the array. This 0 is this one, this one is this one, so I'm reading the values. So essentially, I'm creating a manual iteration, and I'm iterating through the indices. So what if I want to automate this process? Well, I'm going to use another range. So let me just copy and paste this one because I'm too lazy to press C and type and all that. And I'm going to use, again, the count. So C count. Get the count because I'm pretending I don't know how large my array is. Put the array in here. Now this measures the array. Put the count at the end value of the range. And now we have an iteration from 0 to the length, the count of the array. I'm going to take this range and put it in the index, and watch this. It's printing out all these numbers. And because this is procedural, and remember we have 100 initially, and then we added another 10. So if I go here and say, you know something, I'm going to make this 50, then I'm going to add another 5. So we should have 54 as a last number, and you can see that everything works nicely and procedurally. So this is how we create arrays. This is how we change the values of the arrays, how we write values, how we extend arrays by appending values, and then how we can go and create iterations from the arrays by reading these values. Now, although this sounds very theoretical at this point, and why would we actually go build it, extend it, and read, all this knowledge is going to come very useful when we start working with specific things like modeling. So make sure you understand what's going on and keep watching to learn more exciting stuff about scene nodes.